changes um, uh, and things are going to get a lot better. But uh, as a Southern California, uh, born and raised here, it's uh, really a privilege for me to introduce uh, Rihanna Bailey, who's going to serve as your moderator from Pepperdine University. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny, so much. And good morning to all of you. And uh, just to give a little waves plug for just a moment, I just heard that our women's soccer team is actually third in the nation right now. So got the little UCLA plug, so I'll make a Pepperdine plug as well. So good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here. The theme of our panel today is too green to fail, question mark. And we have a really fantastic panel lined up. We're going to hit some hard-hitting issues and some very timely issues. But before we do that, I want to thank our sponsor, Republic Services, and it's fantastic to hear all the wonderful work that Republic Services is doing uh, around the country and also right here locally. Uh, and I also want to thank our track sponsor, Metro, as well. Uh, you'll see in your materials that BICA has provided biographies for all of our wonderful speakers here today, and so I'm just going to do very brief introductions. Uh, Alex Fay is the Business Development Director of Qualian. Chito Kahayan is the Vice Chancellor for Ec Economic Development at the Los Angeles Community College District. Dr. John Husing is the Vice President and Chief Analyst for Economics and Politics Incorporated. And Alex Islas is the Executive Vice President for EcoSafe Systems USA. So just to set the talk context, I always find that panels are best when we have a wide range of perspectives, which clearly we have today with our panel, but I also want to encourage audience participation. So I'll be asking questions, I'll be asking the audience to provide questions throughout our panel here today. But to kick off and, and get things started, I'm going to first ask each, each of our panelists to give us their opinion on the role that green jobs play in the economy. So Alex, why don't we start with you? Sure. Give you this this uh, I think green jobs, just to keep it short, is uh, a great opportunity for the economy, especially Los Angeles. Uh, LA is uniquely positioned with great universities that are spinning out new technologies, um, progressive policies that, that create markets for green technologies where they might not otherwise be, uh, um, be cost effective just, just based on market prices alone. Things like uh, air quality mandates, water conservation mandates, and things like that. <coughs> Um, and we've got a lot of government assets that can be first movers in these technologies, so like the port, the airport, LADWP, and, and other agencies like that. Um, so we have a lot of the tools and a lot of the ingredients to make it work. Um, the question is, will, will we actually make it happen? Um, we also have a lot of legacy industries that can transition to be more green and take on green challenges. My company, for example, uh, is split by revenue about a third in each of the medical devices, uh, aerospace, and military technology categories. We make lithium-ion batteries. They are the same batteries used in electric cars and smart grid energy storage systems. Uh, those aren't big sectors of our company by, by revenue yet, but they have the opportunity to be. And we can use a lot of the same technologies that we've developed for our legacy aerospace customers for new green tech applications. So I think there's a lot of companies like that in LA that can make that transition, and a lot of new ones coming up that, that can uh, create new jobs. Uh, as to whether or not it's a good use of government money to support green technologies, I think it really depends what the technology is and um, what, how the company is doing. So it's kind of hard to put just a broad brush on that. Okay. <clears throat> Great. Uh, thank you. And um, good morning, everybody. So I'm representing the community college system. LACCD is the largest district in the nation. We serve about 240,000 people um, uh, through our nine community colleges. My office, um, the Office of Economic and Workforce Development, we're part of a lot of the procurement activities through the colleges where in the past couple of years, especially, we've been aggressively, we aggressively pursued all the investment, uh, Workforce Investment Act funds, uh, the ERA funds, American Recovery and Reinvestment Act funds, and a lot of those funding uh, and projects focused on the green technology area. So I'm here to discuss and share my information with you all, and hopefully we have a very dynamic discussion. Good morning. Um, what our company does is we use ozone gas for disinfection purposes, and we infuse ozone gas into incoming cold water lines. Ozone gas, everybody thinks of ozone uh, when you hear on the news that we're having a smog alert, and the ozone levels are up, right? So the ozone has a very bad name out there. And the reason why ozone levels are the, are the yellow canary in the coal mine uh, when uh, 
the bad stuff is in the air. Um, if ozone levels are up, that means that ozone is trying, trying to get rid of all the, all the pollutants in the air. Uh, so what we do is we infuse this in water, and it's used for primarily food disinfection, which is getting rid of chemicals. Uh, we're in Whole Foods. We're talking to Cheesecake Factory, uh, a lot of different restaurant chains and supermarket chains that the, who want to get rid of their chemicals in their stores because with, with our technology, you can not only use this on food, but you can use it on cleaning surfaces, uh, seafood displays, meat displays. Um, that's our core business right now. We also have other technologies that we're working on with government agencies for decontamination purposes. Uh, if there's ever a bioterror attack on the homeland, what is utilized right now is pretty scary. It's soap water and maybe a little bit of alcohol. And it's, I mean, that, this is what Homeland Security is using. Um, we were told some pretty st scary scenarios uh, by some folks in the government. Um, now, what we're doing is, I don't like the term green jobs. We're not really creating green jobs, even though we're a green company. Um, most of our technicians are plumbers. I mean, are they green plumbers? I don't know. They're, they're plumbers, you know? <laughs> and when we manufacture our equipment, we're using our manufacturing partners who are based here in the valley uh, and a couple in, in, in Santa Clarita. So if, if we increase our orders, do they hire green manufacturing folks? You know, I don't, I don't like the term. Uh, we're creating jobs, and, and our company is growing. And we're, we're growing every day, uh, th and this economy is, uh, is pretty good. Uh, but we're not creating green jobs per se. And I, I know John uh, <laughs> agrees. Um, count me probably as the major skeptic in this room vis-a-vis -vis the whole issue of green jobs as it's being used by the political community as our route to recovery and economic development. And the reason I say that is in Los Angeles, not in Los Angeles, in Southern California, all of the, the counties, including San Diego, Orange, the Inland Region, Imperial, LA, Ventura, 42% of our adult population has not had a single college class. They stopped at high school or less. When we talk about job creation, that is a huge labor force we have to be worried about. And most of the policies I see emanating from this state pay very little attention to that group. What I see going on with the green movement is first of all, really great job creation in engineering, in design, and in technology, the highest end jobs. The people that, frankly, we don't have to worry about in terms of economic development. The other end of the system I see is a great deal of job creation for installation. Put in solar panels, that sort of stuff, which tends to be at the bottom end of the economic system. The in-between piece, which is production. There, I am really skeptical. I've just interviewed 133 companies. My area of expertise most often, in addition to working on logistics for all of Southern California, is in the Inland Empire. Every producer I talked to said the same thing, and I talked to a lot of them. If they had a choice, they would not be in this state, because the regulatory environment is such that they can't figure out how to invest in a place where they don't know what the rules are next year much less five years from now, which is more the kind of time frame that investment goes. I would be willing to bet that the green trucks we just heard about a minute ago were not made in California. They're made someplace else. And that, to me, is the fundamental issue that really destroys the whole idea of moving forward in a major way with green jobs that are going to really help the great bulk of the labor force of Southern California. 
John, I'm going to stay with you for just, <laughs> for just a moment. I was afraid of for that. Reverse order here. Um, and just go following up on that, and Alex Alejandro actually made a comment as well about the definition of green jobs. And so we're talking about production, we're talking about installation, but is it really a failure of these jobs to materialize, or do you think there is perhaps a problem with the definition of green jobs, or should we even get rid of that green jobs definition itself and just focus on jobs? When I look at it, the broadening of the definition, for instance, one of my clients is the solar industry. Uh, in working with the solar industry, a lot of what they spend their money on is construction. Do we call those construction workers green workers because they are building green facilities? My answer is no. They're using the same kind of technologies they've always used to build that stuff. Now, the jobs themselves that are operating those solar facilities, yeah, that I would include. But I'm, the, what I think I'm seeing is this broadening of the definition to make the governor and a few other people feel happy that they're creating what they said they were. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's right that there's a challenge with semantics here, and, and it's a sexy term to call everything a green job. Um, what I would say, you know, the way I look at it is, um, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, if you worked with a computer every day, you were a tech, you had a tech job. And now we all work with computers. There's probably 150 Blackberries and cell phones in this room. We all consider ourselves to have tech jobs. No. Uh, likewise, not all of us work with renewable energy, with waste management, with water conservation. But uh, the way that the economy is moving and the way you have drivers and policy um, and the way our changing climate is forcing the issue here, we're all going to be cognizant of those uh, concepts going forward. 